Hello guys, welcome back to your new favorite podcast, Do We Know Them? I'm Jesse Smiles. And I'm Lily Marston. Cheers. Should we try it again? Cheers. Uh, absolutely. Now that We're we know a little more, okay, I feel like I just barely go off screen and then just a little tilt. Yep. I, feel like I, I can't it's very full so I can't tilt it much but <laughs> hello everyone and cheers and oh my god how exciting is it that you can say that like people say that it's their favorite podcast maybe it's just my insecurities but I always feel like they're like joking I'm like okay come on but like maybe some of you actually mean that I don't think people like troll with like positive comments <laughs> oh is that not is that not how trolling works <laughs> no guys we made it to episode seven that means a whole seven weeks has gone by that's arguably way over a month. And honestly, my mind just keeps going to you could, You brought up trolls and it was going to be such a direct lead in to more about deaf noodles. And then you just said seven weeks. Really? I was like, we've already talked about him for two. We can't talk about him anymore. We're not doing it. We can't. That's not well, happening today. Is it not happening? We don't know because here is the thing. We don't really know what today's episode is about in general. <laughs> yeah. So guys, it's been, a, it's been some hard times in the internet drama world. We were scouring the internet for anything and everything and we came up dry. I mean, also like it's Monday. So we just put up the last episode yesterday. We haven't had a whole lot of breathing room. I know. But our good friend Megan suggested to us that she would like it if every single episode we include a Deaf Noodles update. Only because there's so much shit going on, especially on Twitter. And every time he's tweeting some crazy shit or doing some crazy shit, I don't know about you, but I get a bunch of DMs of like, are you seeing Deaf Noodles on Twitter right now? Megan suggested, hey, why don't you just do like a <laughs> weekly really quick update of like, oh my God, Deaf Noodles did this and then just keep it pushing. And I'm like, I like that idea. We do like to grant viewer requests. So th this was a viewer request. We just want to please the people. How many times I, we got to say it? We are people pleasers. <laughs> we are. So um, this episode is going to be a little bit all over the map. Guys, it is my birthday week. As a Leo, I get an entire week to celebrate the day that I came out of my mama's coochie. And I am so excited. And I am turning 29 years old. I feel funky. I feel fresh. I feel alive. You have one more year of youth left. Oh my God, stop it. People were commenting on our last video of like, guys, 37 is not old. And like, I totally agree with you. And I'm so sorry. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, when you guys are watching this, um, I will already be 29. My birthday is actually August 17th. Fun fact, my birthday is August 17th. My son's birthday is August 18th. My dog's birthday is August 19th. Isn't that awesome? When are Nassim and Amelie? Amelie is November 20th. Nassim is May 7th. Hmm, so they're just random. Yeah, they're just, they're far away. Nobody cares about them right now, okay? It's all about me. What if you had like a full like royal flush? No, no, I don't. See, honestly, when I had Noah, like I wasn't upset. But when I found out that he was going to have like my You're night, like, bitch, I don't want to share my birthday week with you. It's just hard. OK, as a Leo, this is this is it. This is the time to shine. Although the last couple of years have been strangely depressing around my birthday. I don't know why. But like, you know, summers have sucked and I have hated my birthday for the last two years. And this is the first summer where I just want to like bask in the sun. Like I just want to celebrate life. And that's how I feel. But when you guys are watching this, I will already be 29. So you can still tell me happy birthday in the comments. <laughs> It will still be my birthday We know week. what Jesse wants for her birthday. What do I want? Attention. Oh, <laughs> yes. No, honestly, I'm not that kind of Leo. I'm not like, oh my God, give me a attention. But like, I am a Leo. Like it does, it does fill me up a little bit and I can't help it. That's just part of who I am. But anyway, uh, so this is my birthday episode. We're still getting an episode up, guys. I don't know how much more we need to tell you. We are dedicated to this cause. We're in it for the long haul. Oh, are we going to talk about the lights? Hello? You, I, I, I forgot. Um, do you guys like them? How do you feel? Is it a yay or a nay? Does it hurt your eyes less? I feel like it's a vibe. You might notice that I sound kind of unsure, and that's because I haven't edited this yet. So we will it see. Could, it could look like absolute dog shit. Could be great, could be bad. <laughs> but um, anyway, we're going to keep this episode. We're going to talk about multiple topics, but we are going to keep it kind of short. It's my birthday week, guys. If You can't have me edit on my birthday. That's like illegal. Jesse, I have a question. Yes? Is it your, is it your birthday week? <laughs> Yeah, it is my birthday week, actually. Just, just wanted to confirm. In honor of my birthday... <laughs> I'm going to bring up my Shut birthday. Shut the fuck up. In honor of my birthday, uh, this episode is going to be short and sweet, and we're just going to keep it... You know, we're going to keep it cute. I'm going to let you pick all the topics. Oh, my God. That's not very nice. That's not a good birthday present at all. I'm just... I'm giving you all the freedom, though. It's your birthday. We're going to do what you want. I did ask you guys on Instagram, and I have a bunch of suggestions, half of which I have no clue what the fuck they're talking about, and then half of which I'm like, ugh. Because the number one suggestion of what people wanted us to talk about was fucking 
Andrew Tate. And I have a strong dilemma with talking about this little man. I, I just, I, I hate him so much. And also I feel like I don't want to platform him more because he doesn't even have like a YouTube channel or anything. He only has an Instagram and his little pyramid scheme that he does. Then why but like, have I he seen him so much? This. You see him so much because people talk about him so much. H3 talks about him. Everybody talks about him. Everybody has him on. That's the thing. It was like, I told Jesse, yeah, I understand that perspective because like, yeah, we don't want to platform someone that has seemingly no redeemable qualities. But um, at least we aren't like actually platforming him like as in having him on the podcast and giving him the pl- like we're yeah you know well the thing is that again we give the people what they want and they yeah. do want this like they don't want it but they do want it type yeah. of vibe where they're like yeah, Ugh, yeah. just talk about Andrew Tate so let's just do it and I'll say I don't know much about him so this is going to be kind of my intro I've obviously seen clips because they seem kind of unavoidable at this point but uh you're going to be educating me oh good god well everything I know is through Ethan and god knows Ethan you know he he just mixes everything up <laughs> a fucking mixing bowl so everything i know is because of ethan so if you don't watch h3 podcast then some of this may be new to you but if you do watch h3 podcast we're probably gonna go over things that ethan has gone over but it'll be me trying to like explain to lily just how annoying this guy is got it now he used to go by cobra tate as in like a snake yeah like the snake and i don't know when he realized like that's the dumbest fucking thing ever and he changed it but anyway he used to do music oh what kind oh. The rapping kind. <laughs> oh, like deaf noodles. <laughs> Why would you bring that up? We'll circle back to that later. Here's the thing. You can sing, so I feel like you can't relate to this. But as someone whose voice makes people want to headbutt a knife or not want to watch a podcast, for example, apparently my talking voice is into- intolerable, intolerable, intolerable. Not in my opinion, but it would be intolerable. Thank you. (laughs) Apparently my talking voice alone is intolerable, but I know my singing voice is intolerable. I'm not going to be like, you know what? I can't sing, but I can talk. Maybe rapping is going to be the solution. No, I know that rapping would not be the solution either. Music is not for me. Music is not for a lot of people. And I'm confused why there are so many people that think it is for them when it's so clearly not. Given I haven't heard him yet, Maybe I'll be a new Cobra Tate fan. No, I'm kidding. Oh my God. I can predict that this is going to be absolutely terrible. But you know what I'm saying? Like even, I I guess some people do it for attention, but there are people that think they're genuinely amazing at something when everyone else is just like, huh? Well, he thinks he's like God's gift to earth. So I'm not really surprised that he thinks he's an amazing rapper. His talking voice is so fucking annoying, but just have at it. Oh, oh, it's a music video. It's not just a great cinema i was like that's not him with the neck tattoo love a song where he doesn't start it I have a lot going on because... Because it's so good. <laughs> my brain is... <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. My brain is so overwhelmed because it doesn't know whether we're paying attention to this weird music video. <laughs> His rapping quality, which is essentially talking. Then also the most distracting. I'm trying to dissect the lyrical content he's thrown at me. I'm pretty sure he rhymed fine with climb and dime. Homeboy was hitting the... What is it? The thesaurus? <laughs> The point is, he sucks at rapping, and that's funny. So was this his first career path? Some could say that. No, he actually used to be, you know, an alleged sex trafficker. Okay, I don't know how he started, but I do know that one of the beginning things of his career, I'm just not going to count the music, you know, but one of the beginning things of his career was Big Brother. He was on the show Big Brother. Oh, so that was his origin story? Yeah, but also his villain origin story, because when he was on the show, it actually came out that a video in which he was beating the crap out of a woman in like a you know, a sexual scenario. And he was like beating the shit out of her. She was like crying and he got kicked out of the big brother house. They were like, what the fuck? Get out of here. So that was like his villain origin story. And then he became the most in fucking sexual. What is it? The Just the most, what is that word? In, 
Why can't we speak today? Intolerable? Insufferable? Insufferable. My God. Yes. Good job, Lily. You're he welcome. became the most insufferable fuck on the internet. And ever since, he's been on a tirade, which let's not, let's not get this mixed up. He's doing this as a charade. This is all an act. He doesn't mean half the shit he says. Sure, he's misogynistic. Sure, he's an asshole. But he's just doing it because it gets people like us to talk about him. And that's the only way that he's relevant. And that's just point blank, period. Now, that still makes the things that he says absolutely fucking horrible. But we got to understand the part that we all play in this little charade, which is why I didn't even want to talk about him because ill. But like, you know, I couldn't even describe any of the clips I've seen of him because I don't feel like I really I feel like I passed them and I really haven't seen very many but um he gives me the vibes of the guy on what's it called fresh and fit podcast he's the granddaddy but of worse them. he's a million times worse a million times worse got it if my chick said i want to do only fans i'm like all right then cool go do it how much you made 10 grand all right give me eight all right, cool. all right. why would what woman is going to give you eight grand you're my woman you're doing only fans you're selling my product i love women i have nothing against women at all i'm not sexist in any regard i'm not misogynist either I'm a, I'm a realist ladies on the podcast i hope not but please correct me if i'm wrong probably will. i said if i were to get on a plane and i were to that plane was to fly into the eye of a hurricane there was a 50 percent chance of it crashing I'd want a male pilot because I think that males are better under stress and under pressure. And if you sit here and genuinely think that you're going to work your ass off through your fertile years and by the age of 54, you're not going to be suicidal alone with a cat, then you're dumb. <laughs> the that, happiest really women on this. earth have children and a man who's paying the bills and their mothers. That's the crazy. happiest people on earth. I guarantee it. So they're just turning right and going on her way. She comes and just crashes into this car. And I sat there and I thought, how are women allowed to drive? I'm not sexist in any regard. Not only am I sober an individual, I'm also rich, six foot four, sexy as fuck. I had a girlfriend once. She was a vegan. I didn't know she was a vegan. Unfortunately, I found out. She said, oh, I'll never cook meat for you. I said, look, well, I'll be honest with you right now. We're going to end up splitting up because you're living in my house and I'm paying the bills. And if I want steak, you're cooking it. You know, a man can be head over heels in love. I can love you with all my heart. I can be ready to die for you, take a bullet for you. But I'll still fuck that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not misogynist either. A girl comes at you. Ah, how you cheating? You cheating? It's bang out the machete, boom in her face, and then grip her up by the neck. What pisses me off most, you thick fucks. Beer break. I walk into hell and the devil's like, oh, I'm gonna burn you. How are you gonna do shit, pussy? Okay, so he sounds delightful. So he was on the Nelk Boy podcast, which is called the Full Send podcast, because you're a bunch of frat bros, Full Send. If you look at the comments, it's a bunch of people being like, W for Andrew, like common W for Tate, like blah, blah, blah. Like people ride his dick so hard. But essentially, okay, we'll, we'll include the clips after. I just have to paraphrase them for Lily, because really these podcasts are like, two hours plus so on the full send podcast he refers to women as bitches and question yes do the people that have him on their podcasts podcasts like him so it depends when he went on the bff podcast with dave portnoy and josh richards richards i don't know the guy's name they pushed back on a lot of his insane rhetoric mm -hmm. but when he's on a podcast like the full send podcast with the nelk boys kind of absolutely not they're his biggest i mean they were on hands and knees licking ass like oh, it was like hard like so it's not even like they're neutral like they just like they're openly like praising him let's just say if i was at a party with them i would be like this you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's embarrassing so anyway they flew to fucking croatia just to interview him mind you cobra tate uh, andrew tate whatever he doesn't live in croatia i was gonna say what is he doing in croatia y'all week <laughs> well, there's a lot of theories because he was recently raided by the Romanian police. Oh, he was human trafficking. For suspicions of human trafficking, which he has tried to explain away by saying like, it was what he says it was, was there was a girl that was at a party that he was at and her boyfriend found out and she didn't want to admit that she was like cheating on him because he says she was a hoe. That's literally how he describes it. And he says she didn't want him to know that she was a hoe. And so she told him I'm being held here against my will, which then turned into a whole Romanian police raid situation which he's like no we didn't human traffic blah 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 blah. however he has also been on record just to play how fucking horrible can this guy get he has also been on record saying that if a girl that he's dating has an only fans she owes him like 80 percent of that the is one of the clips because, i've seen yes because he owns yeah. her but vice versa yeah. no if a woman is going out with a man she belongs to that man that's his woman so she wants to do only fans she owes him some money because she's his so yes that's you, what you I think said. well that's crazy you think if a <laughs> that man crazy. If you so you think that a man going out with a girl that that's just your property there, there, there can't be an equal relationship no. 
That one, that one was nuts. That one was nuts. This nuts is where now. it goes Good. crazy. Cool. No, so but I'm... no, that that one you can. If I understood what you said, that if a guy and a girl is dating and a girl does OnlyFans, she owes him a cut. No, one hundred percent. Girl, one hundred percent. He, he is his girl. But what's that have to do with anything? Because she's his. Yeah. So that's uh, what, yeah, so that is part, you saying that women crazy. are y- your property. It's not about being property. It's about the fact that she belongs to him and the intimate parts of her body belong to him because they're in a relationship. And if she wants to sell those, he has a stake in those so, intimate parts so, of her body. So obviously this guy is fucking disgusting, which is why I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. But a lot of you guys, I mean, what do you want to know our opinion? <laughs> Down with him. <laughs> Throw him in the gutter. Do we know him? <laughs> no. Thankfully, I don't know him. And thankfully, I don't. Like, I've never even been in the same room as him because, again, he's just the fucking Where worst. Where does he live? Romania. Oh. Well, listen, there's actually a little bit of lore there because he says that he lives in Romania because the Me Too movement made laws like too strict in the Western world. And so he says that in Romania, they won't just like believe a woman. So that's why. He okay, I'm it. just what I could be wrong. And maybe there's been like amendments to laws or like bills passed or what. I don't know how laws work, but. I don't think Me Too changed any laws. No, it's always those people who are like, everybody just believes all women. And I'm like, where? <laughs> like, who, where Where have you guys been? What are you even fucking talking about? You know how many freaks and predators and people are like living a normal life right now who did horrible things? So he thinks that women, I mean, you name it. He thinks that we shouldn't drive and like just very like misogynistic rhetoric. And then he blankets all of it and defends himself as like, Well, that's just my opinion. And he literally says that he can go out and cheat on his girlfriend because for men, it's not emotional. So So that's not really cheating. This does sound like the Fresh and Fit podcast guy. Like a lot of the same things with that, like where it's like, oh, well, no, if a girl's cheating, it's like the end of the world because it's like they belong to them. But guys, it's like, no, they can go get their dick wet wherever they want. And listen, it really is. I know a bunch of bald kings. Okay, I do. But why? You know what I'm saying? Why is it always them? The problem with this is it'd be one thing if it was like everyone collectively hated him, but it sounds like he does have an audience that likes him. Okay, guys, don't rush to judgment for what I'm about to say. Please. Me and my family <laughs> Me judging. don't want to be canceled. <laughs> What are you about so to one say? Day, I know I'm all clammy. Okay, so one day I got on Instagram and I got a DM from a lovely girl. So he's messaged me a few times before. What are you going to say from Andrew Tate? Oh my God. Absolutely not. But I got a message from a girl and she said, hey, I'm not sure if you're aware, but your husband's following Andrew Tate on Instagram. And I just want you to know he's an awful person. And when I saw that, I, I, I Googled divorce. I'm kidding. But I really was like, I'm going to I'm going to leave this. When man. this is disgusting. when was this? Hold on. Hold on. Please. Everybody hold your horses. Clear to see his name before confront- I text him. I immediately confronted him. I literally was like, why are you following Cobra Tate on Instagram? <laughs> like I just went up to him. I was like, why? Why are you doing that? Did you wait? Did, what, so wait, 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 you didn't answer. When was this? Like two weeks ago. I know. I said, don't rush to judgment, Lily. Oh my God. I'm going to want to cut this part out so bad, but I won't. I won't. I won't. So I confronted him and I said, why the fuck are you following Cobra Tate, who has beaten women and thinks that women should essentially not exist other than for sex? And he told me that he follows him because he thinks he's so stupid that he wants to see the shit that he says. The only reason I'm bringing this up, mind you, he unfollowed him. He unfollowed him. I told him, listen, do you know that he's hit a woman? And he's like, no, I didn't know that. I thought he's just like says a bunch of stupid shit, whatever. So he didn't know that he was like an abuser. He just thought that he was a fucking cringe motherfucker. Now, let me explain something about Nassim because that won't make sense to anybody else. I was going to say that it did make sense to me because I think even in the first episode of this podcast. That's right. I talk about how I hate when people associate who you follow because sometimes like Donald Trump is a bad example because it's like the reason I was following him as the president. It wasn't because I was just like hate watching his tweets. (laughs) Like I was just like enjoying it it was like no well i know he's saying bad things but also like i want to be aware of the bad things he's saying because he's the president of our country yeah and honestly i'm not the type that can do that but one thing you need to know about nasim is he is a very how do i say like he's someone who could sit down with the person you think is most disgusting and insufferable in this world and like have a conversation with them 
them, which comes from a place of one being a man, one being white and being a pretty privileged person. Because like I, I feel like a lot of people who have been through it in fucking life. We don't want to sit down with motherfuckers and we don't want to hear out the dumbass. Like we don't want to give them our time. Like we've been fucking through it enough. They've contributed to bad things in our life indirectly or otherwise me and Nassim both love some good conspiracy theories which I know is not a popular topic in your family no 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 Nassim comes to me with some shit I mean Nassim's not a QAnoner Nassim's not a no Republican. but me and him <laughs> have like DM'd each other stuff where it's like QAnon type videos where like we aren't the audience but we I'm not gonna say enjoy it but it's like it fascinates us that is the word so he becomes fascinated by things that to me just annoy the living shit out of me and yeah. Andrew Tate was one of them so had he been like no nah, he's cool like what do you mean I think I might have left him I'm but not his instant response was to be like, yeah, I, like, I hate watching. Yeah, he literally was like, have you seen the shit he says? It's so fucking dumb. And I'm like, okay, fun, whatever. But you're gonna have to get your clips from TikTok or something because he's an abuser and we don't support abusers here. So he, thank you, Nassim. He unfollowed him, no problem. And thank you to the queen who pointed it out. But Nassim <laughs> does like, he is a very like, oh, I just, you know, I watch stupid shit. He's not affected too much by the things he watches, which again is a pretty privileged standpoint, one could argue. But the reason why I wanted to bring up any of that in criminal information which now my husband may be canceled for was because I wanted to give a little bit of insight on what maybe the majority of his followers look like you know it might just be people like Nassim who are like this guy's a fucking idiot and just like follow him just I guess to that's see what I was shit. kind of asking like how many are watch or like are following him because they are gonna then talk about him like it, it's just like a negative right. or like a content driven follow or um is it like incels that are like we hate women. It's definitely both because you have the people like Nassim who can stomach it because like I can't even hate watch him like he makes me want to throw up and then you have the people who are like 12 year old boys whose balls haven't dropped yet and they're literally in the comments like common W for Tate like he fucking owned you bitches and it's like dude I think that's his fandom is majority those guys which is concerning well and it reminds it gives me creepy vibe. and just the incel community in general i think of um i'm blanking on his name but the santa barbara shooter he's oh, like viewed as one of yeah. their kings these things that these people say can all be like oh my god they're just so dumb but it really does trickle down and can be extremely dangerous like from everything from that example to like maybe just someone who becomes the biggest fucking woman hater and like hurts a woman or like you know mistreats a woman at the very least and that's like the type of people that he's influencing so he is a dangerous person online like i'm people are always like no i'm not for deplatforming i am whatever it gets into the whole argument of free speech and yeah free speech nope. is a thing but also consequences are a thing and also these aren't platforms that like they are owned by private companies so if they do want to have like terms and conditions that aren't going to allow for a certain kind of hate speech then guess what the first amendment doesn't apply well and i'm going to say something a little controversial maybe i'm just a raging liberal but like literally i don't think everybody should have free speech <laughs> I'm like, some people just be saying some bullshit and you shouldn't be able to say that. I mean, what I just said, though, it's it's like, yeah, free speech is the thing, but there are consequences for the free speech. So it's not like you can say, like, you can't call in a bomb threat because right. that has consequences. Like, there's things that happen afterwards. Andrew Tate has been banned from Facebook and Instagram. He was banned on Facebook and Instagram. Andrew Tate, it looks like, has been banned now from TikTok as well as YouTube. Misogynistic influencer Andrew Tate has been banned from Instagram and Facebook. I tried to log on Instagram a couple hours ago. It wouldn't let me. I have good people on the case. I trust due process with Instagram. Actually, that could be one thing we talk about, which I actually don't know that much about. So we'd have to maybe look into it a little. But the whole swatting situation going on, I guess there's been several swatting situations. Most recently, though, there was one with a Twitch streamer who is trans and she went on, I think, her YouTube channel, or maybe her Twitch. I'm not sure. Her name is Get Keffel Keffels. I don't know how you pronounce it. Keffels? No idea. <laughs> but someone sent in a fake threat and she got swatted and then they referred to her by her dead name oh. called her mom and to talk about her son and wow. all this stuff and it was like then i haven't seen the actual emails but apparently it's very obvious that they're fake like they're riddled with typos and it's like not 
it, it's like what a troll would write. You it's mean not... the emails that got her swatted? The threats, oh, yeah, okay. that were like, I shot my mom and then am going after every cisgender person I see or something like that. It was oh, something God. very specific, like she was being targeted because she was trans. I'm sorry, isn't this 2022? Couldn't they just be like, where was it, like IP address, where was this email sent from? And then be like, that's not the address that we're told. I don't know the details about it, so I don't. Well, I'm that's fucking weird. I'm sure, but yeah. Then I saw a video, which then I saw other stuff later, so I guess I can't speak on it from a factual... I can't confidently speak on it, but it was a guy that... The clip I saw was him prank calling 911, trying to get police to come to him. Oh! Oh! Are you okay? Oh! I'm dying! Come on, I'm dying! I'm dying! Come on! Oh, I'm a bitch! Oh, I, need, I need to know what's going it's on. It's burning. Here. Everything's burning. Oh, come on. Now, come on. But then uh, I saw from other people that it was like that was a prank. Like he wasn't actually on the phone with 911. Why do people have so much time on their hands? I don't know. But I guess like swatting, it, hasn't that happened to Ethan a few times? That has happened. And it it happened like, <laughs> was it live? No, I think Frenemies was not live. But it happened on Frenemies. That's why it happens to streamers a lot, I think. Because people, like, they know that they're live, so they want to see right, them right, get right. Yeah. interrupted. Like, I think it's like a like a challenge. I would assume in this day and age, like, swatting would have a lot more consequences. Because I feel like, even with VPNs and shit, it just should be so easy to be like, oh, this is Maria from down the street. Like, we know who you are. But they don't, and <laughs> well, it's so weird. I think that's that's the biggest discussion around it is like why aren't they like strengthening laws around swatting and like making there be more consequences because that seems like such like that's so dangerous because they could literally like go in and end up killing someone and has swatting ever resulted in like unaliving someone like a public person Mm -hmm. i don't know they come in with like guns blazing so i wonder yeah well that's what i just said is that like it's a very it's not like a Oh, mm-hmm. prank called 911. Like, no, they come in as if, I don't know the criteria a SWAT team needs to go SWAT a house, but they're not going in just because you said they had like a gram of weed. Note to self, never stream. I would like die. If that happened and my kids were home, oh my God. Well, and that's the thing. It's so easy to find people's addresses and stuff. This is not a good segue. But not what we should talk about. No, no, I'm not saying that's not what we should talk about, but this just reminded me of a story I told long time ago on my youtube channel it's one of the most embarrassing and the funniest things that has ever happened to me um a lot of revealing stories for me in this episode guys i know i'm gonna totally regret my fucking life when i'm editing this video (laughs) be like jesse shut the fuck up but you know what guys we're all pals here nasim is a good man please give him a chance um (laughs) he doesn't like cobra tate literally though like just really quick like how can if he was like or any of you guys if your husband or your significant other was a genuine andrew tate cobra tate like fan like, what do you do how do you fuck them after that something tells me that if that was the case you would have seen some other red flags <laughs> well there's a bunch of like there's like a whole trend i guess on tiktok where girls will post that they're seeing their boyfriend like watching Cobra Tate and like all the comments are like leave leave right now run but like you know there's like a whole trend of that of girls who are like ill this is gross but their boyfriends like are fans of Cobra Tate like fans of him I can't imagine that someone that would be like a huge fan of someone that is so like those are all their viewpoints on everything that they wouldn't share those viewpoints and like be implementing them in their own life right. and you would know from something other That's than them true. watching that like they would be an asshole as well yeah like i was genuinely when that person told me that he was following him i'm like what the fuck like why would this be like that doesn't doesn't match up with their behavior at all (laughs) and also really quick before we completely jump off the andrew tate train i know we're all over the map today but there is something about him having some sort of pyramid scheme with his hustler academy he has like a hustler academy where people sign up and they sign other people up so there's like a small mlm i mean honestly I, I kind of feel like anyone that signs up for the Hustler Academy deserves it. I mean, yeah, but it's also could be children. But the whole point Come is, on. I do know that exists. I just have definitely not done enough research into it. And like, I don't know, but apparently he runs a pyramid scheme. It sounds very uh, reminiscent of like, didn't the Ace family have some kind of like get rich quick course and then like jake paul is also have like how to get famous yes everybody all the fucking dumbest people are like i want to start a university (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like, please don't. Anyway, jumping forward to like the swatting thing that we talked about reminded me of this story of once upon a time when I was just a wee little girl in high school. I was living at my dad's house and my room was facing the driveway. So like my window was right here on my left and I could see the driveway from my window. It was just a one story house. So like whoever parked, like I could see your car. Okay. It was like three or four in the morning, something like that. It was the middle of the fucking night and I see a car park in my driveway. And obviously it wakes me up because the headlights are facing my fucking window. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? So I look and I'm like, it's probably someone who's like lost. No, someone gets out of the car. I start freaking out immediately. Okay. I had undiagnosed anxiety and I was not medicated. So I start freaking the fuck out. And then I hear that person go up to my front door. Okay. Mind you, my dad used to work like overnight. So he wasn't home. I was home alone. <sighs> All of a sudden I hear jingle jangle. Someone was trying to open the fucking lock of my door. With keys or like just the knob? It was hard to tell, Lily. I was panicking. There were keys because it was your dad, wasn't it? No, it was not my dad, Lily. I'm not a dumb bitch. <laughs> that was the whole element of it. It was not my dad's car in the front. I was like, I couldn't. Okay, okay. okay I have astigmatism, okay? I couldn't exactly see whose car it was. I just knew it wasn't the shape of my dad's car. So then I hear the jingle jangle. Now, if someone had just put a key into the door and opened it, I would have said, that's someone who's supposed to be here, obviously. Okay. There was a severe was a struggle. A struggle. It was a severe amount <laughs> of jingle jangling of someone who was trying to open, then open the knob, then try another key, open the knob, try another key. I'm like, that's not no key. That's like a fucking lockpick thing, you know, kit. This is a break and enter. That's what I said. So immediately <laughs> I call the police. I call the authorities. I say, you need to come now. So I'm on the phone with the police and I literally, all I remember was telling them obviously my address and someone's in my house. I'm home alone. And they're telling me, stay in the room until we get there. All of a sudden I start hearing someone like in the house. They got in. So I'm on the phone with 911 and I'm like, they're in my house. Then I start hearing strange things. I'm like, why is the faucet turning on? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, who's here to wash their hands? I thought you were here to take my shit and kill me. Immediately, like, something starts happening where I start doubting myself. But you know what? I was still, I was completely going with it because I couldn't deal with it. So I remember whispering to the 911 operator. And I was like, I'm so scared. Like, literally, I said that <laughs> verbatim. What I would do for the 911 recording. Literally, I have <laughs> thought that so many times. It has, is that like, I can never have that? I don't think they're like public record, but I think you could request it. Freedom of Information Act, baby. Let's make it happen. If there wasn't a crime, I don't know if they saved them. Oh. Which I'm sensing that's where wait, this is Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I start hearing the, the faucet and all that stuff. And yes, the very hygienic burglar. Yes. <laughs> and long behold, like seven cop cars show up outside because it was like 5 a.m. at the time. At this point, they have nothing to do in Kendall, okay, in Miami. It was like they were all eating at Isla Canaria and they were like, all right, let's go ride and see what's up with this one. And they all showed up. It was like six or seven cop cars. They all jump out of their car. They immediately start swarming the sides of my house to check the back. And the operator says, ma'am, they're there. You can leave the room like you can get out of the room which i find weird because like have you caught the burglar yet like that doesn't make sense i leave my room the cops were not in my house yet but they were all on the side and stuff and i look and it was my cleaning lady marta and she goes buenos dias jessica and i was like i marta i literally wanted to crawl in a hole and die and then i didn't even have time to tell the police they were in my house through my sliding glass door in the back that my dad would always leave open and they were like the sliding glass door is open in the back like they were like you know starting the report and i just said it's always open in the back it was just my cleaning lady i'm so sorry oh my god and they all looked at me like i was the dumbest bitch they had ever seen in their life i'm crying a little. <laughs> Wait, why was Marta there at 5 a.m.? Yeah, same, an early same fucking questions I had. I was like, Marta, <laughs> why the fuck are you here so early? You're supposed to come like at 8. Oh, man. I'm crying. It literally goes down in history oh like my, my most embarrassing fucking moment. Like, oh God, no words fuck. can explain the just instant regret. Like, she was literally getting a bucket ready to mop. <laughs> I was like, Marta, what the fuck? And so that's what your swatting story reminded me of. So I just wanted to bring that story back another day. I have a story that reminds me of that exact feeling of regret, Do but share. I feel like it's such a tangent that I should go down. Please share. I'll I'll make it I'll make it short. A couple a few years ago now, I have a whole story time about it on my channel too, but a few years ago at Coachella, 2017 Coachella, I lost my phone or it got stolen. Pretty sure it got stolen because it was dead in my backpack. And then when I got in my cab later I like went to go grab it and charge it and it wasn't there but everything else was mm. I'm like but I didn't open my backpack how did it just like just my phone jumped out didn't make sense so then this next year 
I'm like, no one's taking my phone this year. And I was very conscious about its location at all times, made sure I had it with me. Yes, well, um, it is the night of Beyonce, the second weekend I'm going. I have come back the second weekend. I mean, honestly, I came back just because I wanted to have good time again, obviously. But my reasoning was I didn't go to Beyonce the weekend before. So that was like my main excuse that I'm like, well, I, ha I have to go back. There's no other choice. So I go back weekend two for Beyonce and before the biggest like the headliner on the main stage they have to set everything up and for Beyonce she had like I think it was like walls of flowers and like a huge runway and stuff so before she goes on there's a good like hour and a half two hour lull in the main mm -hmm. area so we were getting tired and we were like oh my god we can't be like falling asleep Beyonce is gonna come on soon <laughs> so we go over to the do lab which is like the rave tent we had you know, had a fun day. <laughs> We're just <laughs> enjoying the rave tent. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm with my friends, Nicole, who was our editor at Clever. I, you've met her. Yeah. Um, and then my friend, Laura, and my friend, Chelsea. And the four of us are just kind of like in the, like back of the crowd, just dancing a little, trying to keep our spirits up. And Nicole feels someone tug at her phone in her back oh. pocket. And Nicole is like, fuck no immediately like turned around and starts confronting the guy Love that. but he hadn't actually taken it oh so someone was trying to take it but he hadn't yet because she was this guy just tried to take my phone and she kind of yells it so immediately my like <laughs> everything kicks in for me that i'm like not this year <laughs> and i reach and feel like my back pockets and my phone is not in my pocket lily you and fell I'm for like, the trap the distraction yeah, trap I, i'm like <gasps> My phone's gone. <laughs> so I go up to this guy that she has just caught trying. And it wasn't like he tried to take my phone and it was a mistake. Like, no, he absolutely tried to take her phone. It wasn't like a misunderstanding. Like we weren't like in a huge crowd of people. They also were working in like a team. There was another guy and he had a big scarf that he was twirling around. So he would come around and kind of like have it touching you. So then you're used to like having something That's like very plur like of him. At this point, I confront this man who is middle-aged, not to be ageist. Sorry, right. Deaf Noodles, if you're watching. <gasps> but um, he was <laughs> he was an older man. And he looked at me and just the look in his eyes, like this wasn't a misunderstanding. Like he absolutely tried to take Nicole's phone. And then when I go up to him and I'm like, where's my phone? He looked at me like, oh shit, I've been caught. So this man starts pulling multiple phones out of his pockets, like offering them to me basically. Love that. Like, I'm like literally just mind blown being like, no, that's not mine either. That's not mine either. And after he has offered me uh, three or four and I'm getting increasingly angry that each one is not mine. I'm like, where the fuck is my phone? Ooh. He then just pushes me and runs shut the fuck up i'm i'm literally not exaggerating it all shoves me did you fall to the ground actually no surprisingly not oh, okay. um i think i was running on a lot of adrenaline though because yeah. my immediate reaction was hell no i'm not losing my phone two years in a row so i go chasing after him because that's a great idea oh my god we go into the crowd of this rave tent and i am shrieking he stole my phone and like chasing after him and he has on one of those you know those like cheap little backpacks that are like they give away at events that are really easy like the ace family probably like the ones that you pull places. yes the drawstring ones yeah, yeah yes so um he has one of those on and i grab like the top of it because that's like he can't get out of it and i'm like trying to stop him so i get my fingers like kind of caught i think chelsea actually because then chelsea comes with me we're both sprinting through this crowd of people trying to catch him and she ends up like bleeding i'm like grabbing his arm and his shirt and stuff and She's again bleeding? still yelling and yeah, because her finger like gets caught in the drawstrings that's insane it was a really intense situation so then eventually people were like a little too into the music maybe so i think they didn't really realize what was going on at first but then once they realized it was like a girl running through a crowd yelling he stole my phone Oh, maybe we should help. So out of nowhere, I start having these like huge, like yoked, like really muscly guys that are all like shirtless, just pop out of nowhere and immediately ask no questions and stop him. One of the guys gets him in a headlock, but 
in the midst of the headlock, somehow my arm gets involved and is literally like just completely stuck, cannot get out. And they are like falling to the ground and I'm still involved in this entanglement. <laughs> and it was traumatizing through uh, running through my head was like, why did you do this? You could have just gotten you have insurance You could have gotten a new phone. Not a big deal. No, fuck um, that. I'm like, you're going this is now we're gonna have to go to the hospital. You've broken your arm. This is this literally because it was so just like about to snap. And I'm just like, there's these huge men. They're all just uh, everyone's toppling on top of each other. Well, I have to know. Well, did you get your phone back? I had a hero pop out of nowhere and he like jaws of life yanked my arm, like the arms apart and got me free. As soon as I was free, I back away and I look in my backpack. No, Lily, you had your phone the whole my time. My phone was in my backpack the whole time. I was like, where does the embarrassing part come That's into it. play? So I, I know your, your moment <laughs> of holy shit, what have I done? Meanwhile, I'm staring at this man being tackled on the ground by multiple people. I back away slowly and I go, Nicole, we need to leave right now. She's like, wait, why? And I'm like, we need to leave right now <laughs> because I'm like mortified at what is happening. And I'm like, did I just get this man tackled for no reason and just imagine all of this? What if he didn't take me phones? What? If, oh my God, what's going on? So disaster averted, we uh, had acquired the bag and Nicole opened it and found like 50 plus phones and wallets inside that he had been stealing all weekend. Okay. And eventually I assume those got returned. It ended up being like I was a martyr because I didn't have to do that. And I put myself in harm's way to get everyone else's stuff back. back. But it could have been very, very different. At least somebody <laughs> did something related to your accusation. And it wasn't just your innocent, tiny, like four foot tall cleaning lady named Martha, who, by the way, was married to my grandpa. <laughs> So, I can't so it's, say it's your queen way. So here, it's your Lily. step grandmother. Listen, everybody's all you know. It's a mishmash thing going on in Miami. Everybody knows everybody. Somebody's grandma is somebody's cousin. Uh, you know, it's just. Oh my god. Yeah. No, yours probably is a little more embarrassing because mine at least had a positive outcome. But um, for those moments, I understand what you're going through. You could never understand. That's like if I had called the cops on my cleaning lady by accident, but there was actually somebody in the back breaking in. That would have been nice. I know. Well, so I'm saying now I don't know what you're currently going through after the fact because it hasn't been something that plagued me because something positive came out of it. But for those five to 10 seconds right when it was happening that I was like, holy shit, what have I done? Is this man innocent? Because I just did this for yeah. no reason. I can relate to those five seconds. No, honestly, I was just always so scared. Like my brother and his friends and stuff would play pranks on me, which were traumatizing. He's apologized. I forget. Boys him. are terrible. Me and Joey are so close. But when we were teenagers, he was so freaking mean. And like also I was low-key mean too, but like he was so mean. So when he would be there with his friends at the house, we would all be hanging out in his room. Let's say my mom wasn't there. My stepdad wasn't there. We would all be in his room. He would go out of the room and pretend like he would turn off all the lights and pretend that somebody like got him in the house, essentially. Like somebody's in the house. Then he would play that prank on me and whatever friend I was with of his. And we're like, oh my God, Joey, you're so fucking stupid. Then that friend would be like, I'm going to go fucking, that's it. It's been going on for too long. I'm going to go get him to stop. Then that friend would get in on it and be like, oh my God. And so I'd start screaming and they would like scratch the walls and just be like, ah. and I would literally be like, I'm calling the police. Like I literally would scream at the top of my lungs because I had such bad anxiety and I always thought somebody was going to kill me. Was this before or after the Marta incident? I think it was just during. <laughs> Like, I was just a nervous wreck throughout that whole period. If I heard a sound and I was home alone, I would grab, like, a knife and prepare to battle. So, like, I was not well up here, you know what I'm saying? When the Marta thing happened, it was, like, fuel for every fear I've ever had. And I was like, oh, my God, That's what I was going to ask. Like, what... But, <laughs> well, I was going to say, was it fuel for Joey and them to do do it more because they knew it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Job. Oh, they loved it. They loved the fact that I would react so, because I would like break out into sweat. We used to play a game called Gaina Ciega, which is a blind chicken. And essentially, you would literally put on a blindfold and go in the dark and try to find your friends. So when I would do that, they would wait until I was the person that was the gallina. And then they'd just leave. No, they wouldn't just leave, but they would do things to like <laughs> fucking scare me. And then some of, sometimes they would leave. They actually did that to me once where they just like, I was searching forever. But then also they would just do things like noises and stuff to just scare the fucking shit out of me. And I would always take my blindfold off and I was like, I don't want to play anymore. That's ridiculous. Like literally my brother was a fucking worst. It's just so weird to imagine now because I feel like you guys are so close and he just seems so not like a prank type but anyway that's that's all i want to share as far as stories of my life go i feel like i 
Yeah, I was like, well, now that we've touched on some uh, personal story times and some family stuff, um, should we go back to the internet? We did tease Deaf Noodles at the very beginning of this and then never followed through. Oh my through. god, we did. It's almost just his Twitter. That's where shit goes down. That's where I get the DMs about like, oh, wait, no, it's Is not. Is it just his Twitter? I don't know why the fuck I just said that. Okay, you take it from here. <laughs> Uh, well, so Dennis has taken to posting videos now dedicated entirely to his haters, quote unquote. Haters encompasses anyone that doesn't love his content, apparently. It is so weird. I don't want to keep making videos like this, but I do want to clear the negativity out of my comments because I think that my real followers should not be subjected to the parasocial weirdness that some negative people are currently indulging in in my comments he's very keen on the word parasocial but i don't think he's ever looked up the definition <laughs> what's very interesting about this situation is that he will in the same breath as saying you guys are fucking weird uh -huh. for uh -huh. thinking that you know me will be like but my real fans, you guys know me and you guys ride for me and you guys are the ones I'm doing this for. I'm like, sir, look up parasocial relationship, please, for the love of God. That's the thing, though, is he does that. And it's so I'm like, do you really lack that much self-awareness? Is yeah. this a bit? Because no. it's it, you're doing it great. Right? You've really committed. I think it can end. He literally has just deemed anybody that has any sort of criticism. And he's made that clear. He's literally like, if you don't like me, just don't watch. And Marky, I just was watching a video of Marky's right before we filmed this. And he was just like, anybody could say that about you. You've been reporting on YouTube drama for years. And we could just be like, well, stop That's watching Tana Mojo. Stop watching Monty Lopez. Stop watching uh, all these fucking people you commentate on. That's not how this works, Dennis. It's the internet. People don't have to leave your channel if they don't like you. That's what the internet is. And the biggest thing that's like, this is when I think you know that it's like, Ooh, what's going on? Is when, and I think you even mentioned it last episode or the episode before, um, that he is so adamant in like declaring to the public that he's the best he's ever been. He's thriving. He's doing great. And meanwhile, it's like, I'm the happiest I've ever been as he yells it <laughs> into the camera. And, you're and like, he thinks that anyone saying like, hey, dude, I don't really believe that is like creating a weird parasocial relationship and telling him like gaslighting him into telling him that he's not doing well. I don't even want to get further into this other than to really quickly touch on two things. He is out of control on Twitter. And I would argue like, please, Twitter, you banned him before. You could do it again. I know. Like the first time I think was an accident. This, seem this seems intentional. Also, this is so weird because so if you missed it, he basically responded to someone that was criticized, one of his haters. And it was someone that was like- Very mildly. It was mild, but it was an insult, I guess. It was like something about like he needed Fair. to learn about comedy, but it wasn't like a super yeah. serious like of all of the things to respond to it seemed weird that he uh no pun intended got triggered by this one the person said you want to educate others on comedy so we can understand your jokes genius such a mild tweet yeah not not super aggressive even his response is to quote tweet it and say go educate yourself at the end of the barrel of a loaded shotgun what first of actual all fuck in true Dennis fashion, very wordy way to say, go kill yourself. <laughs> but this isn't funny because also, what? Talk about disproportionate reactions, which is quite common when someone's going through this type of phase in their life. They just react like, what? What kind of a reaction was that to such a mild statement? Sure, it wasn't nice, but you can't tell people to off themselves. But Dennis seems to think, no, that's exactly what we should yeah, do. Yeah, he's like, actually, not only does he think that you can, he encourages it. He thinks that more people should do what he's doing. Bro, you literally said go educate yourself at the end of the barrel of a loaded shotgun to someone on Twitter. But you're the victim? I did, in fact, say that. However... What I didn't say was that I was any sort of victim. I may be on the left, but I don't subscribe to victim mentality. I think there are actual victims out there, but I am definitely not one of them. I have been blessed with opportunities that through a lot of hard work have guided me to the level of success that I currently have after years of failing at everything. So no, I am not a victim. And yes, I did tell someone to go educate themselves at the end of the barrel of a loaded shotgun. And honestly, I think people should say that kind of thing more often to each other. Some people need to be told to go to fucking hell where they belong. First of all, telling someone to kill themselves isn't telling them to go to hell. So that's just factually not correct. But also, 
maybe you just shouldn't tell people to go kill themselves. Maybe that's just not funny. Much like your pedophile joke. None of it is funny. There's no angle in which he can claim this was a joke. It's extremely harmful to tweet shit like this. It's so off the fucking, like, nobody's laughing, dude. But the last thing I just want to say in our quick little Deaf Noodles update here is something that Lily so kindly pointed out to me, and I, I, Captain, because it feels like we're on a boat when we're watching his fucking videos. <laughs> he is rocking and rolling. What is going on with that camera? The you only like the segue? Reason, that was pretty good. I, I do. I really appreciate it. And the only reason I'm going to even entertain it to keep talking because I don't want it to just be like that we're shitting on him for the quality of his stuff or his production choices. But the fact that this man has the gall to get on camera and say this. There is no other creator on this platform who is as prolific as I am with the level of production value that I deliver with my content. And this. One of my many jobs before YouTube was creating content for YouTubers. Some of the creators that I helped currently have over 10 million subscribers. It's a lot of really successful people, so I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And then, in that same video, it does this. I'm so confused how you're going to be like, I have such, I have the best production value in the space and just really suck your own dick about how good your videos look when your camera literally looks like it's on a boat. Oh my God. And then he goes off about like how amazing that he built a wall and that wall wasn't there before. You see this wall behind me? It didn't exist two weeks ago. You see this space that I'm in? It wasn't mine two months ago, but I went out and got this place and had this wall built so I could fulfill my dreams. And then Lily texts me. She's like, do you see the seam of the bricks? <laughs> and then, oh my God, Lily, tell them about the sign. Tell them about the sign. Oh. Just let it out. So my problem with um the Deaf Noodle Street sign is not the creative direction. Sure, he wanted to look like a New York street. That was his inspo for the whole set, uh, he said at one point. Sure, I applaud it. Great. The sign, proportionately to me, I... It's just my opinion. The sign proportionately just seems as though maybe he didn't look at the dimensions before he ordered it. Because in comparison to an actual street sign, I'd say it's about a tenth to scale. It's like the main aspect of his new set. It, it, it's it this big. <laughs> He's like, why was it only $19.99 on Etsy? I don't get it. What a steal. <laughs> My friend Leslie, she collects like vintage suitcases and she found like a really good deal on a vintage suitcase and I shit you not, it was this big. It was completely like a miniature suitcase and she was so sad. That was Dove Noodles on that day that he opened that package. And he keeps saying like, I own several businesses. I don't even really need this channel essentially. I'm running multiple businesses. I now have a comedy club a podcast studio. I make these videos for fun and I'm going to make them however the fuck I want to make them for the audience that enjoys them. And I don't know if he got the memo that the only reason he could fund any of his businesses is because of his channel. And also, is he being reported for owning a comedy club that is on record as an office space? Is he zoned for this? We need to get to the bottom of this. He kept saying that he's been making such, like he's been improving his content since he started. And he's always like stepping it up. And I'm like, then why did it look better on the green screen? People aren't telling you to go back to the green screen because they're like, they don't like the change. It's not the change itself, it's that it, it it looks like you're in a storage closet. Listen, Lily. But then he you you make moved videos in. for the whiners and complainers. I don't care that you didn't like the background. I don't care that you saw some random flaw in a video that I made a couple of weeks ago. I am not here to make videos for the complainers. I am making videos for the people who support me. The people who support me on Patreon, link down below. The channel members, also link down below. I am here to serve the people who love my content, not the winos, with a misplaced sense of justice or ownership over my content, especially when all they do is watch my videos so they can bitch about it. Literally, I am so tired of this, but if he continues to be off his fucking rocker, yeah, we're gonna do Deaf Noodle little updates every week and tell you guys this is what Dennis did this week, because otherwise you're gonna have to sit through those videos, and I don't wanna do that to you. It all happened so fast. I keep saying that, but it really did all happen so fast, and he is so dedicated to being dead fucking wrong like there's things that some people will tell us and like between me and lily we'll be like i don't agree with that actually like i don't actually share that opinion but never would i get on camera and be like listen motherfuckers <laughs> this video isn't for you complainy wainy people whiny like it's literally like no our channel is for everybody otherwise if nobody watches me and you are poor forever i'm gonna read one of his tweets um <laughs> 
Because it says, I don't do this for a follower count. So Jesse, he doesn't need you or me. And if you think that you're not a real fan and are in fact looking to follow clout chasers, we'll do anything for a like or a follow. I'm here to do whatever the fuck I want. If that translates into followers, then cool. I don't care. Sir, I think you're going to start to care when you can't pay rent on your comedy club. Right. And literally, he just got that club. I hate, it's not a club. It is leased as an office space, but whatever. He just got that two months ago. He now employs people. Do you know that pressure of employing people, of feeling like if I don't make money, these people don't have a job? And he has more people than we even thought he had originally. So obviously, I think he has money from the couple of years he did really well on YouTube, but he's not even averaging a great amount of views for his channel anymore. Things are falling apart. And he's literally just like, no, this is this was the plan. And he even said, I have a tweet here. He said, I'm far beyond from giving a fuck. I'm so far beyond from giving a fuck that I'm monetizing the hatred that all the trolls and the bandwagon haters have been aiming at me. So keep doing your thing, trolls. I'm going to keep doing mine. The only difference is that I'm making off you. What does that even fucking mean at the end there? Well, and also he keeps being, this is the same as like, I'm the happiest I've ever been (laughs) when he's like literally veins popping out. But (laughs) It's like him saying like, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, clearly you care though, because you've made multiple responses on it and then keep saying, this is the last time. I've never seen someone as relentless to answering hate, quote unquote, aka suggestions that would help your business perhaps succeed. This is not to be like just mean spirited or whatever. Okay. We're we're going off of the joking territory for one second, but like he had to go and promote his roast in like four or five videos and a bunch of tweets just to sell under 50 tickets. That's really bad. As a creator, if you're in a space, especially a comedy club and like all of this, like, oh, so many amazing people are going to be there. Nobody wants to go. That should communicate to him that like he needs to change something because his following doesn't transfer to real life sales or anything. Like he's lost that I don't know. I think that's what he's missing and then everyone else, like why they're like showing concern or like just confusion is because he has this like sense of, is it grandeur or whatever that it's like, he thinks he's here and everyone else is like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. When we were at Clever, we did a brand deal where we had, it was like, we traveled to a few locations. And when we were at those locations, we did meet and greets. That was so nerve wracking because yeah. the number one thing that you think if you don't, if you're not like huge and have like millions of followers and just like this crazy audience, if you're someone like me, mortified at the thought of what if no one comes? Like the thought of us, like, what if we were like, we're going to do a live podcast and we like booked a bunch of locations around the country and then it just like didn't sell at all. Like we would have to be doing so well for me to agree to do that. And that's because I would expect us to not be able to fill those seats and sell those tickets. So like the thought of like trying to fill a theater and especially like online, not everyone's in LA. Like your viewers aren't all in Los Angeles. So it's not like you have this huge pool of people that you're pulling from. You're already making it. So it's like only a few people even have the opportunity to come, especially when people follow you for news. I don't feel like it's normal to think that you're going to sell out a comedy thing. I have arguably, I think I have changed a lot over the years. So like I'm very different than who I was on Vine. I went from Vine to then doing story times to making a whole audience off of that to then completely getting off of story times to now doing this podcast that's completely different than what I do on my channel. And it's okay to do different things. That's completely fine. I definitely feel the need as a creator, especially when your life changes. You know, I had kids. I can't do dating story times anymore. Like I've struggled with my online identity a lot and that's totally fine and normal. And I think every creator can relate to that. But one of the main things that you do when you change things like do this podcast is listen to the people that have known you for a long time it's okay not to listen to the people that are like Lily your voice is annoying I don't want to hear you okay what the fuck is she gonna do about that like literally like what do you want us to do with that but the constructive criticism that would make viewing more of a pleasure for people should be listened to by the creator and to not do that is a big like fuck you. And he says it. I don't care about what you're saying. I only care about people who ride my dick. And like, sir, your camera is making me want to vomit. Like it's literally shaking uncontrollably. And in the same video for then him to be proclaiming that he's the best in the industry. And I'm like, do you watch your own videos? It's going to be his downfall and he doesn't 
fully understand that. He thinks that like, oh, so what if I'm losing followers? So what this and that? He doesn't understand the magnitude of it and how important it is to harbor the relationship between now, I'm not talking parasocial relationship, okay, Dennis? I'm talking like literal relationship between you and your viewers where they understand that you are here to entertain them and you are here to make this a uh, pleasurable experience viewing wise. And if you don't do that, you don't, like I said it last episode, He's depressing to watch at this point. Everything is negative. Everything's a rant. Barely any clips of what's going on. I don't even want to find out my news from him anymore. He doesn't give it. This is like the longest fucking part of the video. And it was supposed to be a mini Death Noodles update. The only birthday present I want from you, Lily, is to stop this conversation about Death Noodles. I thought you were going to say to go roast him. No. I want to Granted. stop talking about dates. <laughs> um, anyway, that's it, guys. Wasn't this such a good episode? I don't even know what we just talked about. Yeah, I'm going to go enjoy my birthday. I'm going to get my nails done tomorrow. I'm going to the spa. I'm going to P.F. Chang's, baby. I Nobody can stop me now. Sorry. You're a little bit too far away. And I'm going on a beach trip this weekend. I'm about to come back looking like J-Lo. Oh, my God. Maybe we'll actually be the same color then. I know. Lily's so tan. She's walking outside too much. Do you wear sunscreen? Yeah. Do you really? Sometimes. Oh my god. No, no we didn't do. What? <laughs> Read all the the wrong saying comments. But it's only been up a day, so we need to let them build a little more. We'll do that next week. Oh my god, Lily. I thought you were going to say, like, record audio. Like, this whole time we haven't been recording. Like, why did you react that way? <laughs> well, I could just shout one out really quick that was funny. All intense and purposes. Like, intense. <laughs> I thought that one was funny, Inside too. Of and I get it, because that one I feel like I have had to look up, because there are is multiple it's intense like ts my intention yeah yeah but then also intensive oh that's the one that's how i say it all intensive purposes yeah. but i don't think that's right anyway we'll read the comments next time we oh, promise wait. actually though i think i did screenshot one that was like i laughed it's from a blc and they said my husband used to say ready as a leather b <laughs> not ready as i'll ever be like a leather b like a leather jacket and a b that stings Oh, that's bad. Okay, we need to end. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>